right, welcome everybody to another Convo Bingo conversation. So today I have with me the creators of Vicious Fun. We have the director, Cody Callahan. What's up, Cody? What's and producer, <laughs> what's up? And the producer, Chad Archibald. How's it going? Good, man, good. That's what's up, that's what's up. Um, so Vicious Fun. I had a lot of fun with this, no pun, <laughs> but I really did. I really, I, and I'm not just saying this because you guys are here, but I really had fun with this movie. And it's been a long time since I had fun with this type of movie, just because it didn't really take, it didn't take itself too serious. You know what I mean? The brutal kills, but you also had fun watching it and just, we can get into it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just want to ask you guys what, Actually, what well, um let's see, uh, what? Actually, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm like my mind's all over the place. So let's just start with every um telling everybody what the movie's about. Uh, so vicious fun, um, uh, follows a uh a horror magazine writer from in the 1980s who stumbles into a support group for serial killers, and the night gets out of control. Yes, yes, and I love it. So, um, it's obviously set in the '80s, and I was watching, and obviously, um, you know, I'm, I'm a correspondent for Fangoria, so I'm looking. I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> <laughs> magazine '80s and stuff like that. So, was there any inspiration from um, Fangoria in this somewhere oh. in the mix? Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. yeah. It was Fangoria is like the, the step off uh, influence for uh, Vicious Fanatics. Um, yeah. It was all grown up on, on Fangoria magazines and stuff like that. That uh, that is partially why this this movie exists. So you know, I think, hats I off think to you guys. Even, yeah, I think there's even a Fangoria magazine somewhere in there, like within a pile of something on on uh, the class. How did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's somewhere in there. I'm not sure if it actually made it on screen or not, but I know it was there on the day. Um, because we usually do, we usually pop a pop a issue in um, to whatever films we're doing, you know, whenever we, whenever we can. Um, we've been fans for a long, long time. We got some nice, nice vintage uh, issues of it too. So it's nice. uh, it's it's always there somewhere. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, what was the inspiration for this movie? Because obviously you got these killers. They're like in the support group for serial killers, um, and then you know one person stumble upon a group of characters and he gets himself into a crazy Friday night with these characters um, that it's really hard for him to get out of. And then it's also taking place in the 80s. What inspired you guys to set this in the 80s and just set it around these group of killers? Um, so, I mean, we wanted, to, we wanted to do something that sort of had like an ensemble uh, cast of killers so to say, and it was, um, I think through um, deduction, we sort of found ourselves in, in like, okay, here's the best way to sort of get inside these, these killers heads and, and stuff like that is like, let's have it at like a, a support group. So we can really kind of see who, who Jason is when he's, when he's not, you know, running around <laughs> killing people. Um, and then setting it in the, uh, in the eighties was, was again, it was, we wanted to do this homage movie to all of our you know, favorite movies from the eighties, not just horror movies, but, but just sort of action, you know, back to the future and all of these, these things that sort of influence us as, as kids. And it felt really weird in the first iteration of the script that people had phones. There was just yeah. something that was like um, grinding against sort of trying to homage the eighties and just having people constantly on their phones. So yeah, I think it was after the first draft, we decided to, to take it back and, and set it in the eighties, which is, which is great because visually we got to, kind of got to do what what I love to do with all yeah. the neon lights and stuff. Yeah, the neon lights, the music, just you guys nailed that atmosphere in the movie, which I love because, I, and I say this every time I do like interviews or if I'm just ha having conversations about horror, like I feel like music and obviously atmosphere, storyline, obviously that makes a, a movie, but sometimes it doesn't always work. But in this movie, it worked. Like I actually felt like I was in the 80s and just the, even from the opening title, I was just like, I'm, I'm loving this. So I just sat back <laughs> with my little popcorn. Now, 
they about literally hit my popcorn and I was just <laughs> I, I loved it <laughs> oh that's, that's awesome man yeah it's I'm a sucker for the 80s um Chad you got anything to add to that no, I mean, we just wanted to make, uh, it's funny because we haven't, we hadn't done like a horror comedy or anything like that before. And, you know, every film that we do, we always try to kind of reinvent ourselves a little bit. And, um, and it's funny because we didn't even go out to do a horror comedy. We just went out to do a fun horror movie. You know, we wanted it to be scary. We wanted it to have moments that were funny, but not, uh, you know, just straight up comedy. Um, yeah. so, I mean, that was our goal with it and, uh, to keep it scary enough that, you know, we could still have, you know, our killers, but but fun, scary, you know, like something I, originally we were like, this, this is our film that we finally made to sit in a theater with people and watch. But unfortunately we've never been able to actually do that yet. Um, <laughs> but hopefully in the future someday. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, you guys did a good job here because it was an even balance uh, with like the comedy and the scariness, the gore and all that stuff. Um, and eat that in heart, you know what I mean? Like, it, you can go into a, a, a horror movie and it can just be straight up scares, but sometimes you need that comedic relief. And But this was an even balance. So even when things got too gory for me, which is weird for me to say because I, I love gore, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you you guys balance it with the the, um, the comedy. Um, and I have a few favorite moments in this movie that literally hit like tears rolling from my eyes cracking up. Um, <laughs> but I don't want to spoil it because I want everybody to watch the movie when it comes out next week oh, I, believe. I wanted to hear your funny the, the funniest part <laughs> well I'll, all right i'll I, I say this give I'll us say one. This one i'll give you one all right so um to me was i think when bob um goes inside the the jail and he the um character is it joel yeah he comes with his mustache <laughs> and the cop just goes off about the mustache i'm just like oh my god <laughs> see the best part about like like hearing stuff like that is that like when you're doing something like this and again like chad was saying it's like we you know we we set out to make something like we knew we were making a comedy but just finding the right actors and getting the right vibe on set like that that mustache thing that was an ad lib that was like oh, wow. on the last the last Wasn't take one of the one of the cops was like you know what i should if he should make fun of my my mustache and we should go off because it's such a <laughs> like we're not we're not pointing at the fact that everybody's got a mustache and bob's got a really bad one um <laughs> and it was funny it's like it's like half the half the jokes in the movie are, are little ad libs that 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 i came up with the actors came up with chad whoever and it's yeah. just uh it's just funny because like a lot of people's favorite moments were like yeah I mean, that's just uh that's just on the fly yeah. Yeah. And there's so many great moments that never even made it into the movie there's so much stuff that we had to cut out there was like a ton of stuff with the cops that's so funny like every take they did they did something new kind of thing so there's uh yeah there, there's tons of stuff to go on the dvd whenever it comes out um you know tons of, tons of bloopers tons of ad lib stuff uh and, and we're really excited to see how people react to those too because there was oh, tons of times where we're like i don't even know which one's funnier <laughs> i don't even know but i'm sure it's difficult to find out just with editing in general because like I do like little YouTube videos and sometimes I find funny moments but I want to keep it to like a certain level just so I can keep audience attention but for a movie I know it's very very difficult for you guys to choose the right things with the put in there and I know you get sad cutting certain things out because you know it's going to be great in the movie but you just like maybe it's just not the right time maybe it doesn't fit well so you should save it for the deleted scenes or director's cut or something so Yes. <laughs> so let me ask you guys, um, I guess without giving too much away, if you can, what are some mem memorable scenes to you that stood out to y'all? Like something, I know you're proud of your work, obviously, but what is the <laughs> one thing that stood out to you that is like, yes, this is my favorite? Hmm. You know, it's, it's funny. It's, um, I think just for the experience of when we were sort of from the shot list to what we were shooting to like the vibe and, and look and everything, there's just something with the the cold open in, in the movie, like just that opening scene that, that I feel like encompassed everything that I wanted to do with the movie in such a short amount of time. It's like, it had the right look, it had the, you know, had the right feel, the music and all of that. So, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's as a filmmaker, it's always nice to envision something and then actually get it. It doesn't really, it rarely happens, but sometimes you'll get a scene or whatever. And, and that for me was sort of, you know, before we wrote it, when we wrote it, when we shot it, when we edited it, 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 it never changed. And so it's, it's nice to see something like that come to fruition after a, 
after you know such such a long time prepping <laughs> it and not having to compromise, I guess, for for that one moment. So that that scene sticks out to me is like that was that was my favorite to shoot. It's just such a Carrie's just yeah. so badass in that too. So oh <laughs> yeah, she is. I have to say she is like one of my favorites because she just kicks ass throughout this whole entire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. movie and she's just so nonchalant about everything too which makes it even so much like even more better for me i, I love her um yeah, <laughs> badass yeah what about you chad yeah i mean i think there's there's two moments that i really really loved um one was actually and not to spoil the ending but the final scene in the movie was actually the first thing we shot um so like Cody was saying, it's the same idea. It's like when we got there and we started filming this and we started kind of seeing the characters for the first time come in and, and act out the scene, even though it was the end scene of the movie, um, you know, being able to kind of, you know, it's just always exciting seeing those characters for the first time on screen. And you're like, you know, we've talked about them so much for years at the, at, through development and whatnot. And finally getting them to start saying lines and really being able to put a face to the name. Um, really exciting. And then the other one was just... Um, when we did the the circle scene, like the uh, support group scene, like the first time, like being in the room and seeing all those actors together, so many of them that we've loved from other films, um, just all sitting in a circle there and just going through the scene. And the scene is like three times as long as it is in the actual movie. So there's so much more that was in that scene too. And just kind of seeing everyone do their own thing and, and how they interpret these serial killers and the little quirks that they actually happen you know it was uh it was a lot of fun and it was our you know our first day with david kettner on there too so you know he made it a ton of fun and ad-libbed some stuff and i think uh he was great I, yeah originally going into it, it was a huge day it was like i don't even know how many pages like 12 13 pages or something like that so it's like those days are very stressful leading up to it but once we started rolling on that it was uh yeah we just knew we had something <laughs> great so i love how your your favorite experience is like my worst <laughs> is having to, <laughs> having to shoot, having to shoot yeah. like we had to do like 18 so it was like 17 or 18 pages in three days so it's just like every every day is compromises but it but it, it turned out well it was it was awesome and i hats off to david david keckner who uh kept the bus moving he's just he's just so good team player too which is awesome yeah he's great everybody was great in this movie everybody um uh, and not to go a little bit off, but I'm a fan of Degrassi. I grew up in the age of teenagers of Degrassi, and I noticed um, Alex Still in here. And I was just like, Alex Still, little girl from Degrassi. She, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> um, so I had to get that in because I'm a fan. I still love that show. Um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you guys hoping to do a sequel to this, if you can? There's So there's there's talks. I feel like okay. if you know if 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 enough people watch it and enough people ask for it, then we might we might do it. <laughs> I'm asking for it, y'all. I'm, <laughs> I'm so. But yeah, serious. we've we've been talking about it for for a while because it's uh, obviously we 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 didn't intend to make a sequel, but we left it sort of open ended. And obviously, okay. you're you're sort of leaving with the, uh, you know, uh, teacher and student sort of protege mm. kind of kind of thing so there's uh there's a there's a big world out there of some ideas that we we have to to take this thing even even further and even crazier so so yeah maybe uh there might be a, a vicious one too 90s hmm. yes <laughs> <laughs> now you're, 90s yep. good times <laughs> so what is um moment in the film um well, actually, let me scratch that. What is something, what do you want your audience to take away from this film all, overall? Like, what do you want them to get out of it? Um, I think I think the same thing that we put into it. It's like we, we set out to make like a fun movie and, you know, just something that you can, again, it's like, it's like just this day and age. It's just such a such a weird dark time it's like we just we just really hope that this movie is just something that you can again just sit down eat your popcorn just <laughs> have fun with it and just yeah enjoy enjoy it yeah just enjoy the ride it's uh we've done a bunch of dark films in the past dark dark horror films and uh this was definitely something that i i think we were very happy that we did at this time because it's been able to uh We've been able to have so many fun conversations with people around the world, 
you know, through virtual festivals and whatnot. Um, and just, uh, you know, hearing a lot of laughter on the other end, which is, which is great. So can't wait to hopefully do that one day in person with people, but, uh, yeah, for now, just hope that, uh, you know, bring some smiles to people's faces. Yeah, we'll get there. You know, the world is slowly opening back up, so we'll get there. Um, and I'm sure everybody's going to enjoy this one. That's why I can't wait for it to hit Shutter, just because I know a lot of people is going to enjoy this. And if not, I will pounce on them. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, before we go, guys, uh, I usually ask this to all my guests or people I interview, what is your favorite scary movie? I'll start with you, Cody. <laughs> it's funny. I, I feel like I, <clears throat> because when you make a movie like this that homages all these horror movies, everybody expects you to be like this big horror movie buff. And I, mm -hmm. and I was when I was growing up, but I, I, uh, I don't watch, like I watch a lot of scary movies, but not as much anymore. Um, but I think... I think the last movie that like terrified me was um was hereditary that was like the last movie that i watched that i was like i left the theater being like that that like i couldn't stop yeah. thinking about it and i'm not and I'm, i know most people probably probably say that but that was legitimately a movie that still sits uncomfortably with me in a in a good way oh yeah rightfully i mean it it earns it it earns a spot so that's that's a good choice <laughs> for sure <laughs> what about you Ted? Uh, yeah, we get asked this all the time, and I feel like every time we say different different answers, I, like me and Cody do enough of these that I'm like, oh, what's Cody going to say this time? <laughs> Vice versa, it's like it's always different. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like one of my go tos for sure is the OG uh, Martyrs. Um, it just it screwed me up so bad watching it for the first time. Um, and also, I just love films that you know flip themselves on their heads halfway through a movie. You know, it's like you think you're watching one thing, and then you're suddenly watching something completely different and yeah it's just uh yeah just it's really screwed up but um you had some insane characters and just insane ideas in it too so uh yeah no g martyrs martyrs is a great one i watched it for the first time maybe like a year and a half ago um and it screwed me up because <laughs> it was a lot going on <laughs> in that movie and i was just like whoa okay cool nice wow. trip <laughs> yeah. oh man well thanks again for joining me guys um i really really appreciate you guys taking time out your to me about vicious fun i can't wait for everybody to see it which will be out on shutter june 29th so i can't wait for again i'm gonna say it again i can't wait for everybody to check this out um i'm obviously going to do a movie review for it on my channel i um, can't wait for that um and yeah i want everybody to check out vicious fun june 29th ninth um do you guys have anything to add before we go <laughs> no just it? check it out have fun yeah spread the word spread the word the more people watch this film the more people talk about it the better chance uh we get to go on set and make another one hey <laughs> <laughs> well you heard it here first from these guys so have fun with this is fun and um everybody check out fangoria magazine check out the website sign up for the newsletter if you want to see more interviews like this and yeah subscribe 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 um thanks again guys and i'll see you in the next one peace